Over the past one and a half years I've been playing Stranded. On this game mode you basically can't leave your island, which means that you have to build a lot of different structures you normally wouldn't see on classic game mode. I go over all the structures on my island. My island is a complete mess. Stopping mobs from spawning in random places is a nightmare. I used to remove things that were old and in the way of new structures. But for the most part everything was left intact or partially broken. Starting with the ice farm on top of my island you can see that it went through a lot. In the beginning it seemed like a good and useful ice farm, but it turned out to be quite useless. In a corner you can see a special natural freeze minion design. If I recall correctly, it was about 1.8 times faster than usual, because minions don't have to place ice, and they just break it all the time. Combined with hyper catalysts, it was the best way to get a ton of ice for Yeti Sword and other items. I don't remember who came up with this design, sorry. Another failed idea was this giant flint farm. Because we have no limit to buying blocks from builder NPC, we have access to unlimited supply of gravel. Gravel is supposed to be placed with the builder's wand and broken with a thin shovel. The problem is that the mining fortune doesn't work on blocks placed like this. So it was a pretty slow and really expensive method of getting gravel. Especially that we now have hyper catalysts. So gravel minions are decent. And yet another kind of failed idea. This was supposed to be the best way to get mining XP by mining cobblestone and minion ores at the same time. I have made an efficient 7 pickaxe to insta break ores so it works fine. But after they added hyper catalysts back, ice minions are the best way of getting a lot of mining XP. And even better option is to just use zealot minions. Those are way slower, but you need them all the time for your hyper catalysts anyway. So eventually I will cut mining 60 thanks to them. Those farms were great. A long time before the guide and update I had to build them all on the island. At least growth rates are boosted for a few crops on stranded islands, so they didn't have to be that big. Right now those are completely useless. I still have to build proper farms on Gaiden. This is pretty much the icon of my island. Those islands were there since ancient times. At the start of Standard we had no access to build an NPC, so placing nether islands was the only way to build a nether world farm. It was worth it. I was the first person to get all max farming tools besides wheat, because wheat hoe was 4 times as expensive as it is now. This is my old fishing setup. I used it a long time ago before I knew what I was doing. And this is my new fishing area. It is optimized for lava fishing. It was designed by Loizai and I just copied it. And the other spot is for trophy fishing. There are 3 mob grinders on my island. This one is the end biome one. So platforms are 3 blocks high for endermen to spawn. Before admins disabled drops from mobs dying to fall damage, it was a really great source of various mob drops. Right now it is pretty much useless. Those mob grinders have some other use nowadays. This grinder used to be 2 blocks tall. Once we figured out that end farm is the best, it became pretty useless. Some time ago I made it into a 1 block tall grinder and used it for getting more spiders for spider slayer. This one is 1 block tall and has light everywhere. It is still very useful for Sven Slayer, and people keep using this design. The credit for creating those farms goes mainly to Oscar James. This is a farm that no longer works. It used to be a great source of ice. You were going down the ladder with first walker on your boots and using a zapper on ice. The zapper no longer can break this ice so it's useless now. I removed water because it was in the way of the next build. This platform was supposed to be used for shiny peaks, but there is a better method. It's abandoned for now. I used this area to grow trees naturally by just planting them. In my opinion it's the easiest and the most efficient way of growing trees. But some people prefer bone meal. It was used for acacia, dark oak, oak and birch. I still use half of this platform for zealot minions whenever I need them. The glass part was used for tarantula minions. Because of some questionable mechanics I had to make it like this for minions to work properly. This is the old cobble generator and next to it a platform for gravel minions. I use this platform for breaking gravel with a shovel. Because mining fortune works for gravel made by minions. Like in other cases, after we got access to hyper catalysts it became useless. I have no idea what that thing was for. This is the main platform for storage. There's also a water fishing area. The wool is from a ranking video I made a long time ago. 
This big wall of chests contain various resources, but mostly it's tire diops. Yes, I need a ton of tarantula silk. I will use it for flycatchers. This is a failed project of the Valence uh, farm, and next to it an early project of the Gaetium farm. I have made it into a tier 1 enderman slayer area that I needed in the beginning. The main guiding farm was removed a long time ago. It is useless now because we have lava fishing. This is one of the prototypes of the tier 4 enderman slayer farm. It wasn't working at all because of a very annoying bug. The hole is right next to X0. For some reason mobs were just going to the X wall all the time. I had to rebuild the whole thing in a different spot to test it. And that is the Enderman farm I am still using to this day. The one I made a video about a long time ago. And right next to it is a whole Revenant Slayer setup. I have made a video about this farm as well if you are interested in how it works. This is the first Mycelium Zapper farm I built. It was quite an efficient way of getting a ton of Mycelium for corrupt soil back then. I have no idea who came up with this design though. That one is a very old Blade Minion farm. Back when Blaze is killed with water while dropping items, it was pretty efficient. And the drops were going into hoppers, and into now removed chest system. Right next to it is one of the old Tarantula Slayer farms. This is yet another testing ground of Endemon Slayer. I had to break a part of my cane farm to build it. I used this dropper for pigs, creepers and other mobs that die to fall damage. But it is now useless because mobs no longer drop stuff when killed by gravity. This way I got my foraging 50. I have used spills because it was the most efficient tree type for gaining foraging XP. Trees go through dirt and ignore it. I used this mechanic to create platform for running which made it way easier and a bit more efficient than flying. This is my main village rotating area. It's one of the buildings I most likely will never remove. Because I have a very special villager here. It's the 85 cocoa bar emerald trade. The best possible rate for the best trade. Here I have a few random things. I remember I was grinding some gravel for a scorpion for you here. And there is also a few jungle trees. Because those aren't possible to go on a regular tree farm. There is also my whole cactus farm that is on top of the cane farm. This is yet another tarantula slayer area. I also was testing a hard stone minion setup here. I did more tests in this area and finally I built the whole thing here. It's the same idea as for ice minions, but instead of water freezing we have stone generators to make minions work faster. I used this area for some mining minions a long time ago. There's also a ton of hoppers. Back when mobs were dropping items when dying to fall damage, this setup was collecting them. It is now completely useless. Here you can see my flying cactus farm. I had to break a big chunk of my cane farm to build this mycelium farm. But still, there is a much better design using the builder's ruler. So this is useless, and I have to build another mycelium farm. And finally there is the cane farm that went through a lot. It's completely useless in this state. This is also the place where I got my first few villagers. They live here for about one and a half years now. That's the whole island and its story. I'll be destroying the whole island to rebuild a proper one. I'll probably make a timelapse video of destroying it all, and upload it someday. See ya.